you heard what I just said. The, the, you know, the free choice that you make over here and then the determined choice that happens over there. Where, where do you feel like you, the two of you fit? Following culture, following, you know, whatever it is, you know, what, all the pieces, right? Um, or are you way down here with like, nah, man, I'm just making this decision on my own. I feel like I was... Like, my parents taught me to, like, cover up and wear a hijab. However, I was not forced to wear it. It was my choice. Mm. So let's walk into that, right? So they taught you. What do you mean they taught you? So my mother wears, wears a headscarf. My siblings, my cousins, and all of my family, they wear a headscarf. So I was, like, unintentionally, like taught to wear a hijab whenever like I grow up mm -hmm. so I just wore it and like I do like accept that decision so when you say you're where, where, are you from Dubai or Abu Dhabi Abu Dhabi so Abu Dhabi is more much more conservative but are there any people in your close-knit family any women who do not cover no no okay so you are Okay, so let's come back to, to you. Okay, Gigi, where are you from? What's your story? Uh, I'm originally Palestinian. Palestinian. After the occupation, my family moved to Jordan. And I grew up and went to high school and lived in Jordan until college. Until college? Yeah. But in Jordan, and you don't cover? No. Does you, do your family cover? No one in my immediate family wears the hijab. Which is not uncommon for Palestinians living in Jordan, right? Yeah that you would not, especially, are you, what, what social class are you? Uh, I would say upper middle. Yeah. yeah, I would say that, too, I would assume that too, given that you're at Penn State, right? Which then it's even less likely. So what were you taught about? Um, my parents are very religious. My mom prays five times a day. She's never drank, she's never smoked. She's very devout, but it was never forced upon me. Um, I was taught the values, I was, I was put in religion classes and Arabic classes, but it was never something that was specifically, like I was told you have to do this and you have to do this. I, I was given the opportunity to create my own thoughts and believe the things I wanted to. I, I do consider myself Muslim. I believe in all of the values and the traditions that come with Islam, but it was never something that I was forced into. Metha, you live in this called Abu Dhabi, very conservative place, right? Um, where, what percentage of women of, wait, first off, when did you first start covering? Let's tell the class that, so. I would say in like grade eight. Grade eight? And how did that come about? When I got my period. So that was the moment. And then your, your, you talked, your mom talked to you and said, you knew ahead of time, like, hey, or hang on, this is the question. Did you know ahead of time, look, okay, okay, when you start bleeding, then that's going to be the moment you need to make a decision, right? Okay. Um, and then what was the decision? Like, what, what, were you, did you already know you were going to cover? Yes, I already know that. Like when? Like how old were you, do you think, do you remember when you knew you were going to cover? Honestly, when I started praying, I think at the age of nine. Okay. So... Given what I talked about here, mm -hmm. okay, you have all this structure around you. You have a whole culture, a tradition. You have like a religious tradition in the Arab world, right? And not just in the Arab world, but in the Muslim mm -hmm. world, okay? You got all this culture, all these strings that at birth, first off, the moment of your birth, you're this person when these invisible strings are coming down and they're connecting to you because you're living there. You know, you weren't living in Jordan in an upper middle class family or you weren't living in the U.S. It would be different if they emigrated to the U.S. when they were in college and you grew up here as 100% American, right? American Emirati, but you know, you were American, right? It, but you, you weren't. So from early on, your, your life, you're just, the strings keep coming down, your mom wears a job, all the women in your family, you know, starting around the age of nine, you already know like they're strong enough that you already know like, yeah, this is gonna be what I do. So do you see it 
is a choice? It is still a choice. Yeah. See, like the sociologist in me will say, from the moment of birth, you're over here. The, you're, you're already born there. Okay? So you're, the, you're much more likely to be going to, to, to cover. Your parents, your mother covers, your grandmother covers, sisters, aunts, cousins, etc. Everybody around you covers. So that means there's like a flood of water that's going this way. And it's just from moment of birth, that water is carrying you here. And decisions are being made for you because these strings just keep getting, coming down from nowhere and they just grab onto you and they're gonna keep you going right down here, right? In the meantime, you suddenly get to this place when you're in eighth grade where you gotta like do this thing. You have to step into this water in a slightly different way, but you've already been immersed in it. They taught you how to swim. You know how to do it. You're already there. It's going fast down here. It's a current. Like, there's almost like, no one said, nobody said you had to do it, right? Your mom, your parents didn't say you had to do it. They did not. What did they say? They did not tell me anything. I just took my sister's hijab and I wore it. What would, what would have happened if you didn't do that? Honestly, the first time I wore the hijab, my father looked at me and he was like, why are you wearing that? You're still young. Uh-huh. And what did you say? And I told him that I got my period for the first time. And he was like, oh, okay, do whatever you want. Uh-huh. And, that's and then it. make your decision. Mm -hmm. Do what you want. Mm -hmm. But you, and your mom, what did she say? My mother was not involved in that. Yeah? Like, I just told her that I got my period and she was like, okay, whatever. Honestly, it depends on the parents. Some parents do force their children. Uh -huh. However, my parents, like, uh -huh. I would say they're more open. So they did not force me. It uh -huh. was my choice. Yeah. Okay. So what I would say is it was a choice because yeah. you made a choice. Yes. But it just, but the choice is still, it's a religious yes. choice, but it's a limited choice because mm -hmm. you've already been set up to make that choice. It's like I have a lot of ancestry that's, that's Irish so I, and Scottish, so I could wear a kilt. But I'm like, I'm not going to. But I could, but I'm not going to, right? So you could not cover, but you were going to cover. Because, you know, so, so it's a choice, but it's a choice within a context, one that you almost have to make. The thing that Westerners, the thing that we all get struggle with is when people hear you say, yeah, but I made a choice. They assume, people will assume that you're over here. I made a choice. It's like, no, it's, you, know, you know what I mean? But it's like, no, no, you didn't make this choice over here. You were over here. You were already really swimming up the stream like here. And you made a choice within this context. But your choice, it's a small choice, right? Because it's highly unlikely you're going to do anything other than you did. But it still is, has to be your choice. And so this is a very different thing. And so... To you all, what I want you to see is this is the complexity of sociology where you're, you, we make choices within a very narrow range of options, but they're all choices. Just like so many of you who think you chose your major and you did not choose your major. Your major was being chosen from you for you by your parents and your family and everything in your neighborhood from the, practically the moment you were born. It was being chosen. And you're sitting here thinking like, oh, I chose my engineering major. Why are you an engineer? Well, just because I like engineering. Like, no, fuck that. You, what do you mean you like, oh, I like engineering? No, you don't. Oh, it just happens that your father's an engineer. Oh, okay, I get that. So you just happen to not like theater. You know what I mean? Like, this is silly. This is crazy. This is the world we're in. So it's very cool. So Gigi, how about you? Like, Tell me about your, yeah, what do you, what do you hear from Maitha? Um, it's obviously not something that I haven't heard before. Mm -hmm. um, but it it's, makes me think about my situation, the, the people that I grew up with. Like, if there was, there's only one girl in my, like, age group uh -huh. who chose to start wearing the hijab. And when she did, everyone was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, she started wearing the hijab. But it's not like, it's not that it's uncommon, uncommon about, like from where I live, some of my mom's friends wear the hijab, my teachers, people I know in everyday life. But it's just my community decided 
that it wasn't something that we were going to adopt. Mm -hmm. And it would almost be the complete... It would, I would be standing over there if I decided to wear the hijab. So if you, so if you said, you know what, I've, I've had a change. If you go back from Penn State, you go home and you're covered. You're like way over... You are really... They, they'd probably think I... I did too many drugs or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which would be, like, Metha, if you went back and were uncovered, if you'd, they would think the same thing for you. Like, what, what kind of pot are you smoking there at Penn State? You know what I mean? It would be a very similar kind of thing, right? Because you're, you're both in this other place. If you wore it, why would you wear it? Um, when I was growing up, I, I had a, a tutor, a religion tutor, so she took me through the Quran, she taught me everything and the stories that came from it. And she, she, was, she was covered and she told me that when I got my period I would have to wear the hijab. And uh, at that point I was maybe seven years old and I thought about how none of, none of the women in my family were wearing it and whether I would want to wear it or not. And it just, it, it was never something that I thought that I had to do to prove my devotion to my religion or mm -hmm. to, to feel modest or it, was, it wasn't something that I felt like I had to do to go through the world with my ideals and my values. Do you sometimes walk around campus and see women who are just like, hang on, did you get, can you get a close up of my face? Like, hang on. Sometimes you see women and you're like, Like, oh my God. And it, like, you know, they got like little spaghetti straps here, or whatever, a skirt that's like up to here. And I'm like, oh my God. And do you want, they, what do you think about that? There's some things that are like questionable. Like, especially when it's cold out and I'm wearing like a million things and they're in like a bra. Yeah. Um, it's just, sometimes it's, it's just questionable. It's, but I, I realize in the end that it's, I, I'm in a different place, I'm in a different country, there are different things that are acceptable. Uh -huh. yeah. do, you, do, you, do you have the idea though that you sometimes wish like, that you did cover like, in certain places where you just kind of want to be just in your own space? And... I don't think that I have to be covered to be in my own. Like I, okay. I'm, I'm, I would never walk around in like, almost nothing. Because it's mm -hmm. just the way that I... Like, at home, we don't wear shorts outside. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. We, you, you can't. So I, I, it's not something that I picked up or I do. Uh-huh. Um, and I think that's the way that I show my modesty and the way that I dress rather than then whether my hair is out or not. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. I think... And, and Metha, how... The modesty question. Can you explain... Do you... Would you... Could you explain some of that? Because I, I think there are probably a lot of people here who don't really understand. It's almost like our version of like privacy. Mm -hmm. It's like your body is your own. Mm -hmm. It's like it's a temple. Yeah. Right. So it's just like no one, no one needs to see that. Like my mom, sometimes I'll wear something that's like slightly just like questionable at home, and she's like, "Why?" She's like, "There's no need. Like no one needs to see that." You know. Uh -huh. But it's it's also the fact that my mom at home still needs to remind me that you like you can't you can't dress like that. You know. Uh huh. But um, and when you say like that, what do you mean? Like, um, like sometimes I, I like come be coming home from the gym and I'm going to like get food, and I'm wearing my my leggings and like a shorter shirt. She's like put on put on a jacket on top of it, so it's just my bum is covered and I just I'm less revealed. Uh huh. Yeah. And and then how, and how do you feel about that? Sometimes I'm like, because I'm in a rush and I just want to go eat, but I understand that it's just people people tend to judge by looks very heavily back home. Uh huh. They they just they'd be like, who's this stupid girl? What she like? What she wants? Yeah, but people judge by looks here, right? So when 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 you know when women are walking around, you know, with a, an immodest display of skin, let's say, right? Mm -hmm. People are judging at some level, right? In some way. I think back home when it, when they judge you in terms of how modest you're dressed, it it comes from how respectful of a woman you are, like without using yeah, yeah, yeah. the words I that it, I. Yeah. I yeah. got you. So if you're if you're if you're immodest, then you're you're not showing respect to yeah. yourself. To yourself, to yeah. And so, Mesa, how about so how about could you say more about that? Like, to whom do you to whom are do you take your covering off? Your hijab, your scarf. Women, my father, my uncles, my brothers, and my future husband. Uh huh. So, meaning that. So that means you know, you would, they would see your hair and your full face and everything. I think that people tend to follow the crowd. 
Uh -huh. it just keep, it's safer, it's easier. Um, there are like, and then the people who tend to jump away from the crowd are often seen as outcasts or like weirdos. Uh -huh. And by example of those weirdos, um, it causes everyone to follow the crowd even more. But then you see someone who like jumps out of the crowd who is actually very successful and very outgoing and very, and it makes you question whether you, you have what it takes to follow whatever you're actually thinking. Yeah, 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 that's cool. So it works in all ways, right? So for you, you're, you're following the crowd by not covering, right? Even though you see all the ins and outs of it, you're following, I mean, to a degree, you're also making a small choice, but whatever. You're following the crowd, also making a choice, but following the crowd by covering. And it's like we're, and, you know, and I'm following the crowd by wearing the clothing that I'm wearing, right? And um, by having my hair like it is. I mean, you know, one thing after another, right? Um, we're, we're all, which so many of us are always are following the crowds and then thinking that somehow are wanting to make as many um, uh, decisions as we possibly can. And so, for example, like when you, when it's, when there's like, it's formal time or whatever, right here, like you have like the formals that y'all will do, those of you like in sororities and stuff, like women here will all wear the, almost the exact same dress. And it's like, well, you didn't choose that dress. The dress chose you, right? In the same way that all, all of your, all the women in your family and friends, they, they, you're not choose. To a small degree, you're choosing, right? But you're also, it's choosing you. I mean, all of these things, it's the nature of life. But we all want to think that we're making lots of choices. But it's really difficult to make choices.